Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. A new week begins on Infinite Magic Red and so this weekend we are going to have a new banner on Excellent and Supreme Wishes and so we are going to talk about it in this video. As you can see this is the banner we are going to have. I'm going to try to give you my advice on each hero in the inside of the banner and after that we are going to talk about the Cloister because uh, this is the second week after the patch and so we have many things to talk about and also we have uh, the I have the new chest, the new meat chest and so we are gonna see what blessing I'm gonna have am I gonna be lucky enough to get a speed one that time that would be the first one I get and that could help me a lot so we will check that after so first let's talk about the banner the first hero in the banner is gonna be Notch this is the most recent bleeder we had in the game um, what to say about the hero I don't have the hero so I couldn't try him and you know that I do love when I can try things myself so I can give you my advice on the hero but that time I wasn't able to try the hero to get him um, and so nobody is using Notch anywhere so maybe in the faction abyss if we have a look to the eternal sect let's check if uh, someone is using him and apparently no single notch. Okay, there is a notch right here. But player, other players were able to clear the stage 30 without notch. Look at that. Four heroes only. <laughs> okay. Um, I have the heroes. Uh, but I still can't clear the stage 29. So I have to work on it. Notch normally is better than enrolled in terms of AoE damage, but in terms of single da target damage, uh, nobody is using Notch because at the end of the day, your need roll, Lysander, are better than, than Notch. And look at that, this is the kind of team people are using against the Weathering Coast. They are using Chardonnay, uh, Grace, Lysander, and need roll together, and uh, someone to increase the damage, the attack, the turn meta, etc. There is no notch at all. So, the second hero of the banner is gonna be Huff. Huff was great when the game first launched, but today he is not that great anymore. He can do uh, th interesting things during the fight. First of all, he can place a defense down 60% and a tenacity down 60% in one skill but single target. Today, if you have a caster, he can do that in AoE. And also he can freeze, he can deal some damage. And then on the basic attack, Hoff can place a resistance down 50% on the target. It can help uh, early game to put some debuffs on enemies. Uh, it was the case before when you uh, was fighting against the guild boss. And today it is not the case anymore. You have a team with Hoff in PvP, uh, mostly for championship, who can be uh, great. Uh, I'm going to show that to you uh, in a moment. Let me check. Okay, I'm gonna put the team right here above. So you, you need your Lydia. Of course, you're gonna need Lydia. You need a Rista. You are gonna need... Um, where is... Where is... Yeah, Quinlan. Um, you are gonna need her. Where is my Quinlan? And then you are gonna need a Huff. Uh, I think... No. Ma maybe not her. You are gonna need Lysander. Uh, you can use that or you can replace your Quinlan by another one, but it's going to be an, an interesting team. Uh, so, you want to have a lot of attack on uh, Lysander, and so uh, he is going to have uh, the alliance from that uh, Rista. So he's going to deal more damage. If you have some exclusives on uh, Huff at the beginning of the wave, he is going to put a Hunter Mark on the hero with the uh, highest attack, if I remember correctly. And also he's going to use his first active skill on that guy. So he's going to have, at the beginning of the fight, uh, defense downs and tenacity down 60%. So your Quinlan is going to deal some damage. Um, Lydia is going to deal some AoE damage. And every time they are going to take a turn, your Lysander is going to pursue the target and so deal more damage. This is an interesting kind of team for um, Advanced Arena and the Championship. So Hoff can still be interesting today but less than before. Uh, so then you are gonna have Focus. I still have no exclusive at all on my Focus. It would be great to have the third one. With the third one Focus can give a second turn to your hero. That means your your highest damage dealer plays. Uh, I'm gonna show you. 
uh, Imogen, this is my team. Today we are going to we are using Esther or Jack and Roll. Imogen, if you don't have one of them, you are using your focus instead. Let me uh, find my focus. You want to have a bit less speed on your focus uh, so he can play right after your highest damage dealer. The goal is going to be to increase the damage of uh, Melchior for example or Belton if you have a Belton. Yeah, let's say I have Belton. Uh, so you want your Belton to have a lot of damage and play before focus. So right after focus can give an extra turn to your uh, Belton and reset the cooldowns of Belton. Uh, it, it's not uh, mandatory with Belton because he has no cooldowns but on other heroes such as Margarita on other or others uh, it's a great combo because uh, you get an extra turn you get your cooldowns you get an, at an attack up 40% and so if you have the exclusive 3 you can get two extra turns in a row you have 50% chance to get the second turn and so using that combo you can clear the entire team in front of you super easy. This is why I would love to have a focus. Also, he is great in some specific teams because uh, depending on the heroes in your team or in front of you that dies, he increases the turn meter of your entire team or his own turn meter. And so you can take advantage during the fight. So it's a great hero. And also he can uh, lower the turn meter of the enemy single target using the basic attack and apply an immortal on your entire team. So that's still one of the best support in the game today. For PvP at least. Then you are gonna have Moloch. And Moloch is interesting today, but it's gonna depend on the heroes you already have in your team. For the Weathering Curse, for example, if you want, you can use a complete burn team using that, using that buff here. It's gonna be interesting, you want to build this kind of team, okay? If you have the limited heroes, of course, use the limited heroes in your team. Uh, use Ogradis, use uh, Moloch, and Moloch is better than Andras in this kind of team because he is gonna help dealing more burn damage with your entire team. Uh, where Andras can increase the damage you are gonna deal to the boss and then he's gonna deal a lot of a lot of damage by himself. If you want to compare both of them, that guy um, is gonna deal more damage normally than Moloch or almost the same, but Moloch can increase even higher the damage of your team. Both of them can apply deep burn too, increasing by 50% the damage taken by the boss, but Moloch uh, summons some meteors that are also increasing the burn damage taken by the boss and so your team deals more damage. And at the end, uh, he deals the same amount of damage as uh, Andras on this kind of boss uh, because Andras needs a lot of turns and detonations in order to increase his own attack and deal more damage during the fight. But Molox has his maximum potential at the beginning of the fight directly and this is why at the end they deal almost the same amount of damage. Uh, Molox is also great for the faction abyss, only PvE. He is only PvE. If you have a look to the, to, to the stage 30, you are not forced to, to use Moloch, okay? Because as you can see, some players are using Andras with focus, uh, some others are using Moloch because he's more efficient than Andras, and some others are even using uh, none of them. Okmin. He does the job, then it's a matter of stats and heroes you're gonna have, okay? Then the last hero of the banner is gonna be Dakota. Dakota is great today if you are planning to have a lot of damage or high scores in the Watering Coast using uh, Poisoners. But she is not great only in that content today, she is also great in the uh, Cloister. Uh, let me check, yeah, there is a Dakota inside of it. She increases the attack of your entire team by 40%, the speed of your team by uh, 40%, and she can also revive one hero per, um, per fight. Uh, uh, so she is really really nice for that and this is a passive with the exclusive too. You are gonna need exclusives on her if you want to put all the buffs on your heroes and she deals also a lot of damage by her own so yeah this is a great hero. And on the cloister at the moment you need a Dakota uh, because the boss, the theme of the boss now uh, on this session, season, uh, is poison. That means you need a poison team in order to beat him, otherwise you are going to be stuck in this rotation. 
So it's really important to have a Dakota. She's gonna be mandatory after maybe the stage 30 because after that you are gonna need to put a lot of uh, poisons on enemies and if you don't have her, the revive is essential really important. Finally, let's talk about the epic heroes inside of the banner because you have some really interesting ones. The first one is Eliezer, probably one of the best epic hero in the game. He is such an amazing support. Let's talk about him. Uh, he is in the Eternal Sect. This is Eliezer, one of the recent heroes we had in the game. First of all, we look just at his passive. He can increase the attack, defense and max HP passively of your entire team. Passively and this is so great. You are gonna be more tanky deal more damage So great and also if your heroes uh, in your team are from the eternal sect The the bonuses are gonna be increased a bit more and he is gonna have more uh, Bonuses on himself and if you have a look to the ultimate if you have the exclusive 3 He is gonna also grant your and to your entire team crit rate is 50% and crit damage is 60% for two turns Basic attack, he can lower the attack by 20%, it can help a lot. And at the end, he deals a lot of damage. This is a great hero for the Faction Abyss especially, or if you are early game for the campaign, he is a great hero, you, he's gonna help you a lot. And uh, here you can use him to clear the last stages, so even late game, he can be really useful at least for the Eternal Sect. And in the Tower of Markle, so he is gonna be interesting in that content. Uh, the second hero is Dustin. You can still use Dustin today, but, but mostly early game in the campaign or in the faction abyss in mid game, late game, depending on the heroes you are gonna have. And here, Dustin is still really interesting. And as you can see, I'm using him. He is an amazing hero. He can heal your heroes. He can lower the attack by 20% of the boss. He can lower the effect hit of the boss by 50%, so you have some chance to resist. The stun from the boss. Uh, he can uh, shield your heroes 40% of his max HP, and every time he takes a turn, he can cleanse up to two one control effects on two heroes randomly. That means if you are fighting against the, this boss, if he stuns two of your heroes, you can cleanse using Dustin when he takes a turn. This is a great hero to use in this faction abyss. And also in the Tower of Mark an early gaming campaign. So the next one is Dorian. I don't know, this is not... We don't need to talk about that hero, okay? Even the design, I don't really like it. He is not a great hero, okay? He does not a lot of things. Feebleness one, he deals uh, uh, just a bit of damage, counter attack and attack up. No, this is not a great hero. Clearly not. Nobody can use him anywhere. And the last one was Daisy. Daisy, pretty interesting hero. To increase your direct damage, she can apply many buffs to your heroes. The crit rate up, attack up, and crit damage up. She gets some turn meta increase at the beginning of the wave, depending on the... Um, in fact, every time she takes an attribute D, uh, buff on her, she gets some turn meta increase. And this can be really strong in the fair arena for example here you you can have a team using her uh, use a set for example if you have set you are gonna have an attribute buff at the beginning if you have that one she's gonna put a crit damage bonus at the beginning of the wave and so it's gonna increase her um, her turn meta she if she can play first she can increase the stats of your heroes and Giving herself some stats, she's gonna increase her own turn meta. If you have a Pauline exclusive 3, it's gonna help a lot. And then she can deal a lot of damage. So she is pretty interesting for that. But outside of PvP, I don't think she's gonna be useful. And in PvP, let's be honest, I think uh, early mid game she can be interesting, but after that, uh, you are gonna lack some damage using her. So let's talk about the cloister so this is the second week last week they gave us they gave us uh, 10000 um, of that currency and so we could buy some powers some divine powers so uh, you have only 3 divine powers per week they can be different as you can see uh, that one and that one were here last week only that one changed and the buff that you are buying in the market are permanent. That means for now I bought no buff at all this week, this Monday. Uh, every buff I bought 
uh, I bought them last week. So if you have a look, I have a lot. I have a lot, a lot, but if you click here, the buffs you already bought are gray now. That means they are not changing. You don't have other buffs to buy. And you, this is great because they are permanent, but this is bad because they are weaker than the, the buffs we had before the patch of last week. I, I'm gonna show that to you because someone uh, told it, uh, said it in the, um, on the Discord. So let me show that to you. Yeah, this is Apo. By, by the way, he has a YouTube channel and he deal, uh, he uh, creates pretty interesting uh, content. So if you want to have to know more about the watering cost, for example, to have great teams, he can reach 10 billion damage, almost 11 billion damage in one attempt. Yeah, he is one of the best players to talk about the watering cost today. So uh, he gives many, many good advice. Look at what he did about the uh, weather, the, the cloister. Uh, he said that before we could have 24% effect hit, uh, today we can get only 24% effect hit maximum and before the patch we could get 60% more effect hit from poison buff and so it's a big nerf. And also now we can get up to 60% more mastery and last um, before the patch we could get 150% which is a huge difference. So because of this kind of uh, nerf, yeah let's say that because this is the truth, this is a nerf, it's way harder to beat the, the endless cloister but at least there is some positive aspects and some negative ones. This is a great, a big, big negative one, okay? Because, <laughs> let's be honest, look at that. I was able to clear the uh, stage 36, the difficulty 36 before the patch, okay? And now, even if, I'm pretty sure that even if I buy the entire buffs, I won't be able to clear that one anymore. The 150% mastery, only that, you could deal a lot of damage to the boss. But the final boss, I was so close to beat him. Um, I don't know, this is gonna be just impossible in my opinion. Oh, we are gonna need to have a lot of blessings, etc. Uh, I, I don't know. I think now you are gonna struggle to beat the, the boss stay of difficulty 31, something like that, 32 probably. But yeah, this is this is bad in my opinion. They should increase the power of the uh, powers, the power of the powers of the divine powers as it was before. This is my opinion. So uh, enough talk about that. Let's try to see what do I get. Okay, a D one. Why not? So uh, some diamonds. Here, what is the legendary one? Freeze resistance. Okay, why not? And please be a speed one, mythic speed blessing, please. And it, another HP one, I have only HP. Okay, this is not bad, this is 12%, this is still great. But every week, week after week, I have some HP rate or flat HP here. I want some speed, come on. Uh, almost finished the week, okay. So, in terms of farming, this is still interesting. I am farming in Otto the 25th. Before, I was able to farm in Otto the 29th or the 30th. But we had more buffs and we had more power with the buffs. It's still interesting because even farming the 25th, I was able to get some uh, luck and get some um, one or two mythics one, mythic ones, but they weren't that great and uh, some legendary ones you still get some uh, decent uh, blessings and at the end remember that the blessings you can craft some using that and let's check what can I get get some rare ones tenacity 9% this is pretty strong suffocated okay I don't care poison damage bonus direct damage bonus okay 1.7% uh, effect hit, it, it's not gonna help me a lot. Freeze hit 4%, still interesting. Uh, let's try to craft more, quick craft. 
I want to craft some elite one, elite ones to get some purples. Damage reflect, attack rate four percent only. Freeze heat. This is interesting. Fourteen percent. Tenacity four percent. Still interesting and a bit more crit rate. So it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You still have a lot of good ones at least you can get some extra stats on your uh, heroes on your main teams and so it can help i do enjoy that content still uh, even if it's uh, hard to complete and even if it's taking a lot of multi battles for now at least it's it's um, you need a lot of multi battles to acquire buffs but once you are going to have the buffs they are permanent so you all only gonna need to uh, farm to use your keys and this is interesting, better than before. Tell me what you think about that in the comment below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If it's the case, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a nice day and see you in the next video in which I might try to get the 16 billion damage in the weathering cost for the first time. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.